Alright, so far we've just logged out the data coming from our form to the console, and that's obviously not what we actually want to do with it. We want to add it to the overall array of listings that we've got in our application. So just as a reminder, that array of listings is here in the crib listing component. So if we look over here, we've got our cribs, which is an array, and those cribs are being populated by this call to our crib service, and we're calling that get all cribs method. Once we call that, we're subscribing to the result that comes from it, and then we're populating our cribs array with the data that comes back. So the challenge now is for us to be able to get the form data that comes from our form submission here into this array. So one of the first challenges here to notice is that these are two different components we're dealing with. We've got a crib listing component, and we've also got an add listing form component, and those are separated. The challenge here is to basically make them talk to one another. And the way that we're going to facilitate the communication between them is through the service that we've set up down here called crib service. Right now the crib service has this get all cribs method which we just talked about, but what we're going to want is another method called add crib, and this is going to be the communication bus between those two components. So what we'll end up with is up in our add listing form components, we're going to want the crib service. So why don't we import it now? We'll do import cribs service, and that's going to come from one level up, and it's going to be into services slash cribs dot service. So now that we have that, let's inject it here. We'll use the constructor here to say we want crib service, which is going to be an instance of cribs service. All right, so within the submit method here, we'll want to call the add crib method from the crib service. So we'll say this crib service add crib. And we want to pass the data that comes from our form into that. Right now we're getting an error on here because the signature isn't correct. We haven't finished out that add crib method, but we'll do that in just a second. So this is going to take care of routing the data that comes from the form into a method so that it can then be routed over here to our crib listing component. And much like we're subscribing to the results that come from this get all cribs method, we're going to do a similar thing here for our single crib addition. And to facilitate that, we're going to use something called a subject, which comes from the RxJS library. Just as a quick reminder, RxJS is the reactive extensions for JavaScript, and it's used widely throughout Angular 2, but it's really not an Angular 2 specific library. Really, it's a library that gives us a way to use observables in our JavaScript applications. And just as a quick refresh, the place that we've already seen observables is here within our get all cribs method, because HTTP calls in Angular 2 will return an observable. And because they return an observable, we can subscribe to them for results. And that's what we've done here within our crib service get all cribs method. We're subscribing and getting the data out of it so that we can populate our cribs array. So we're going to use something here in our service that is similar in some ways, but is kind of different. So let's see what's going on. We're going to import something called subject, and that's going to come from our xjs slash subject. So the quick description here is that subject is both what's called an observer and an observable. Basically, it's a way for us to set up behavior that is like an observable, but we can also subscribe to it as we would an observer. So that's all a little bit conceptual. Why don't we see it here in practice? So let's set up a new property above our constructor, and let's make this public, and we'll call it new crib subject. And we'll say it's a new subject. And we'll just type in this for now as any. All right, so now within our add crib method, let's use it. So add crib is going to take some data. We saw that we're going to pass some data to this method from our add listing form. And what we want to do is call this new crib subject and we want to call the next method. And in that next method, we want to pass the data. So again, going back to the fact that observables are this way to observe values over time, what this is saying is that whenever some data comes through from the add crib method, whenever the button is clicked and that method is called, send it through the subject. The idea being that we want to observe things over time, so there's always something that might come next. 
So one thing that we'll need here to finish up this method is we're going to set the image property on our data to be default image. And that's because we don't have a way yet to put in a specific image for these crib listings. But what we do have is this default kind of placeholder image and it's got a title of default image. So that's what we're going to use for now. And we do that by just quickly modifying the image property here that comes through on our data. All right, so let's save this and let's go to the crib listing component class. And this is where we're going to subscribe to that subject. So here's what it looks like. We'll come down and say this crib service and we want the new crib subject from the service. And this is where we can subscribe. So we can call the subscribe method on it. And this is where we can now bring out any data that's within it. So for now, let's just log it out to the console. So we'll say if we get some data, let's do a console.log on the data. All right, so let's save this and we'll just make sure that our form component class is saved as well. And let's test it out now. All right, so let's put in some fake data here and we'll just make sure that everything works out. So if we hit add now, there we go. We've got our console.log working. So effectively what we've done now is we've set up communication between our two components. The flow here is that when we submit our form, we're calling our service and we're sending through the data that comes from the form to the service. We're calling the add crib method, which over here in our service is calling the next method on the subject that we've set up. And because a subject is both an observable and an observer, we can call next on it and we can observe that data coming through in our crib listing component. So that's the communication bus. It goes from our listing form component into the service and then into our crib listing component. So now that we have that communication set up and we're getting the data through here, what we can do is add it to our cribs array. So very simply, we could just do something like this cribs push and then we can push on the data that comes through. So let's see if this works out. Once again, we'll put in some test data here. And if we add it in, what we get is we get a new card with our property, but we've got this error here that's saying the default image wasn't found. And that must be because there's no default image in there. Let's just check our assets and our images and default crib is actually the name instead of default image. So let's just change that up quickly here. This will be default crib. All right, let's try this one more time. So we'll go up again and do our test data. And there we go, we've got our new crib listing. Now, if we want our new listing to show up here at the beginning of our array instead of at the end, what we can do is use the spread operator. So instead of pushing on to the end of our array, what we'll do is say that this cribs, so our cribs array, is going to be equal to an array that has our new data at the start, so the new data that comes from the subscription, and then we're going to spread over the existing data. So the existing data that's on our cribs property, we're going to spread it. So we're going to take each of the elements that's within the array, the cribs array, and we're going to spread them out into this new array. We're basically going to take each element out of that existing array and place it into the new array one by one. All right, so let's make sure this works and we'll just test one more time to make sure that we're getting everything as we expect. All right, so there we go. There is our listing and it's at the start of our array. And of course, we've got all of the details for it that we'd expect just like we do in our others. We've got our bedrooms, bathrooms area and our description as well. Okay, one last thing here is that the form after we submit it doesn't get cleared. We still have all of the data that's within the form. So generally when you submit a form and the data goes through, you want to have that data be cleared out so that it doesn't look like some kind of error took place. And we can do that very simply over here in our component class. Essentially what we'll want to do is after the add crib method gets called, we'll want to clear the form. But to do that, we have to get a hold of the form right here within the component class. Remember that in our template, it's called new crib form. So we've got this template variable called new crib form, and we can use that within our component class. What we've got to do though is call the view child decorator. So let's get the view child decorator from Angular core. 
and let's set up a view child. So we're going to say view child and we want it to be called new crib form and that's going to be our new crib form from our template. So now with this, we can come down here and say this new crib form and we can call the reset method. And if we want, we can actually annotate this a little bit further with ng form. We know that this is going to be an ng form, so we can bring in ng form from Angular Forms. So we'll say ng form, and that's going to come from at Angular slash forms. All right, so let's just prove that this works back in our application. Let's do our test data once more. All right, there we go. So we've got our new listing in place and our form was reset. So it looks like everything is happening okay. We've got all of our listings coming through and we're getting new ones being placed at the start. The next thing that we're going to do is put in some way to sort these listings.